Hello, this is Mike. Welcome back. Uh, so today, today is, uh, what is today? June 17th, 2020, I think. Sounds about right. Uh, anyway, this guy showed up in the mail uh, on Monday from uh, one of my oldest friends who lives across the country. And uh, she reports that one channel st stopped working, the other one was intermittent. Uh, pulled up the service manual. This has a chip amplifier in it. This is from, I think, the mid-80s or so. Uh, so it's getting pretty, pretty up there in terms of just, you know, age in general. I thought maybe, you know, since it was intermittent, there might be a relay in here, but I didn't see one in the uh, schematic. But it does have these main and remote buttons for the speakers, which it could be the switches are just dirty. Um, so we're going to test it out, take a look, and it needs, apparently it needs light. So I'm going to pull the cover off just to have a look, and then uh, we'll hook it up and see what we get. And maybe we'll get lucky and just can uh, clean the switches and controls and it'll work. But we also discussed possibly um, putting in some new caps because she'd like to use it for another 15, 20 years anyway, or longer. You know, because it meets her needs and uh, otherwise works fine. But if it's, you know, from 19, say 1985, then that makes the caps in it 35 years old. So they're, you know, I looked through the uh, service manual today. It doesn't look like there's a lot of them in here. Even the power supply caps are not very big, 4,700 microfarad, so it might not take much to recap this thing in terms of cost. If that's the case, and I can get it to work at all, that is likely what we will do. So, this is a Techniques SA120 for anyone that knows anything about these. I don't. This is the first one I've ever seen. And mostly I fix tube stuff because I just like them, but we should be able to fix this too. And get the lid to come out. What's the deal here? This side came loose. This side does not want to come out. We got all the screws out. There it goes. Yeah, it's just stuck. It's got quite a curve to it, but it's very thin, so we can straighten that out, no problem. Okay. Well, let's see, turn it up so you can see it. I think that'll work. It is very sparse, single-sided, mostly discrete components, couple of chips in there, almost certainly part of the tuner or Maybe the uh, phono phono stage. Um, so, yeah, there really isn't much to it. Here is the power amplifier module. It is an STK4152, Roman numeral 2. I think it said this was 35 watts per channel. So there's our power supply caps. Here's all our other ones. Take a good look at them. I don't see anything bulging. So that's a good sign. So let's hook it up and see what we get. Okay, so we've <laughs> stuck some little short pieces of wire in here and I clipped them onto uh, some speakers. Got a wire going up to our signal generator. Um, I haven't powered it on yet, so I can't see the front. And I really don't like the way this is, but it's going to have to do for now because the connectors don't allow for much. Else. So, anyway, does that show up in the camera? Yeah, so not quite straight. Anyway, uh, let's so uh, we'll hit power and turn the volumes all the way down. It is. Oh. 
Okay, so CD. tone if I bump the remote switch that channel works so let's put this to the other channel and see if that guy works I don't even know if I got it on the right input <laughs> yeah CD Same thing. So it's just the switches. That's really good. So we're just gonna clean those up real quick and then see where we go from there. This might be the quickest repair ever. And it is <laughs> got some dust on her. Alright, let's uh, get these switches cleaned up. We'll clean up the jacks. Kinda... Those are I mean, they're safe, but they're kind of crusty. Uh, let's see here. Good thing is, amplifier module's working. That's a really, really good thing. We don't have to buy one. Okay. Uh, so, we'll just kind of... out of it. Now we've got to figure out how to whoops, disconnect our signal generator. Figure out the best way to get some cleaner. These switches are, I know that's not zoomed in. I may move the camera above the view. I'm just trying to give an overview here. So we'll, uh, let me move the camera and I'm getting close up and um, figure out how to clean these switches and see if that fixes it up. All right, so our two switches are right here. This is the main uh, the, the main and remote speaker switches, which is definitely where the problem is since it, you touch them and it fixes it. Not sure if the best way to get stuff in there it's only held in with one screw, it looks like. Let's see if I can just pull this whole module out real quick. And uh, maybe that will make it easy to get to the switches. Yeah. Okay, and winner, winner. We got a winner. Okay, let me see here. Well, we can zoom in a little bit so you can see what we got. So this will work. Okay, so we've got our two switches right here. We don't see a good opening for getting cleaner in, but we're going to go right here along the legs. And I'm not sure, I think I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, CR, yeah, it's not zoomed out, anyway, a little CRC spray in there, work it, and then I might put a couple drops of um, deoxid to just let it kind of sit in there. Work these switches a bunch. 
So, this is a D100. I don't know how much will go in there. Let me see if I can't get a better. It's got like a pinhole, but. Still confidence, but I think I'm gonna put a little bit of D5 spray in there. Work them in some more. All right, let me zoom out. We are gonna connect our speakers back up okay so I've got it, uh, is it in the frame yet I took off the turntable <laughs> the turntable is great for big heavy tube stuff this thing weighs like I don't know five pounds ten pounds and it just was a pain in the butt so um, so anyway we've got our switches here which are hopefully cleaned I've got the uh, speaker connections back up connected I found another uh, cable to go to the signal generator so we don't have to move that around. So let's power this on. And hopefully we have sound from both channels. Gotta turn the signal generator on. Turn it up a little bit. No, that should be good. Okay. So Oh, let's see. I got nothing. Well, that's not good. It was working before. Now I've killed it. <laughs> I doubt it. Let's see. Got to push the button in. That's the remote. One channel. So one channel's low. seem to be working it might be the controls need cleaned well I'm sure they need cleaned but that seems to be fixed so that's not flaky anymore both sounds the same I'll have to hook it up to the analyzer and see um, but I think that is good we'll see what kind of bulb this takes and uh, clean all the rest of the controls and then uh, I'll bring you back and we'll test it a little more properly but I think that that's gonna work yeah I can hear the channels cutting in and out as I um, but they're both working good now I think more than anything these just need to be moved troubles working I can hear the change so that's cool Um, I guess all I gotta do is uh, we'll clean up the controls and um, I'll bring you back and we'll test it on the analyzer and see what we got. Okay, um, I've uh, cleaned all the controls, put some deoxid on them, uh, and they, I haven't checked it yet, but they feel better, so they probably work better. Um, they haven't been. <laughs> You know, this hasn't been cleaned ever since it was built, I'm sure. So this lamp is out, our dial light. Um, I have not taken it out yet. I figured before we hook it up to the analyzer, we'll take a look and just see what that is, if we can get it out. If I can get in here without getting in the way of the camera much. 
I'm gonna hope I can just pull this out. Yep. So it looks like we have. I don't know if this will just. If it slides out of this housing or it's. I don't want to break it. I mean, I got to change it no matter what, but. Let's see if it's just. Yeah, there we go. It's just soldered in. So let's see what it is marked. Where is my magnifier? That is a Stanley 158. And I do not know off the top of my head what a 158 is, but I know I don't have one. So I will Google that real quick and uh, see what it is. Okay, I am not 100% sure how well this is going to work. I got it pointed at the computer um, because I don't have a screen capture stuff down in the shop. So this is, as soon as it starts up, uh, so I have a, a Prism Sound D-Scope 3, which is sort of akin to a... Uh, Audio Precision Analyzer, not quite as expensive, but definitely not cheap either. But, um, we're just going to take a basic, just to see, if, you know, what it looks like. Uh, and uh, see, we'll turn that to uh, 50 millivolts. Let me go turn on the amplifier. So these are our outputs we're going to be feeding in uh, it's 200 Hertz right now that's fine we'll change it Let's see what we get first okay well it came on so that's good so that's turning the speakers off Turning the speakers on, so they're definitely connected. I've got an 8 ohm load on it. Our output is very little. Let's turn up our level here. Half of a, oh yeah, well it would really help to turn the generator on. And looky there, we got a nice sine wave putting out 355 milliwatts on that channel, 264 on that one. So a lot of distortion on the right channel, very little on the left. Changes to kilohertz. So we still have a lot of distortion on the right channel. About 2 dB more gain on the left, so I was actually hearing it up in the little speakers. This one's jumping all over the place. Let me go turn off the fluorescent lights over there too to see if it's picking up something. I made the distortion better. Not great. Let's. So the balance all the way to the left. We have uh, 22.4 dB of gain and 0.1% distortion. Balance all the way to the right. We have 20 dB of gain and eh, 1 2% distortion. It's flaky on the right channel still. Try the speakers on and off. I don't think it's going to make any real difference. Now let's try adjust the volume control a little.
You can see right there it's not as bad. Only got about 1 dB difference. Right channel straightened out a lot. Distortion's not great, but better than it was. Turn it up a little more. So now we got 27.7 dB again and 26.3, so still quite a bit louder. Right channel is fuzzier, which is the lower right, lower um, graph on the left, the FFT and a lot more distortion. You can see right here we've got 0.3% and about 1.1, 1 1.2. .1, 1 it's moving all over and we've only we're not even at one watt of power. Let's turn our generator up just a little. There's about 1.2 watts on the left channel and, and not quite a watt on the right. Distortion actually went down on the right channel. Hmm. Channel imbalance is a little less than a dB now, so that's actually a lot better. I wonder if it's just the volume pot. It's all the way up on the. I don't know, it's not. There's 10 and 12 watts. Actually, it's much, much better up there. The channels are balanced. Pretty close. Yeah, not real good, but closer. Distortion's much, much lower. Turn the volume control back down. It's much better, actually. I wonder if it just needs to warm up a little bit. Even for a few seconds at 10 watts, it got really hot. There's not much heat sink in this thing. So, so right now we've got, you know, about 0.6 dB difference. Actually, the distortions, both of them are 0.1 now. So that's pretty good. It's much, much better. So if we turn our signal generator up, let's go 200 millivolts. Let's just bring it up a little bit till we get, you know what, let's do this. Let's regulate it to a watt. 1.8. Hmm. There we go. So. About a quarter volt. So we've got one watt on the left channel. 0 0.85 over there. So we're still about... 0 0.6, 0 0.7 dB difference. Distortion is much, much lower. 0 0.06, 0 0.07. So I think the amplifier module's okay. You know, obviously we got power supply noise down here, but this thing doesn't have very much power supply cap in it. It's got basically 4,700 microfarads for each channel. And uh, I wonder how much of this is just due to a flaky volume control. Let's let it run for another few minutes at, at uh, one watt and warm up a little more. So our distortion has went way, way down. So hopefully all this shows up on the camera. I don't know. Let me zoom out just a hair here. Let's see here. There, it looks like it's all in there now. Sorry. It looks like these guys were cut off a little. Um, so... Yeah. Second, third, fourth, fifth, a little, a lot of harmonics, second, third, fourth, but they're not terrible. You know, you're looking at about 80 dB down for, for the second order, and a little more, a little less for third, fourth, fifth, on, on up. So that's not too bad. And channel balance is not changing any right there. Let me... Just mess with the balance control just a hair. Yeah, I mean, 
the balance control just barely off center. Now our channels are exactly equal. I mean, within a couple of ten hundredths of a dB. So, distortion on both channels 0.07 percent. That's nothing. <laughs> How hot is it getting? It's not bad at one watt. Let's turn it up a little bit. I'm just moving the volume control on the receiver. It's about two watts. So now we are now the right channel is very slightly higher than the left, so the it doesn't track perfectly, but you don't expect it to. Move our balance control a little bit. Yeah, I mean they're, they're fine. So, yeah, 0.05, almost 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 2.1 watts, 24 dB. I'd say we're good. And uh, the light bulb is, uh, looks like it's used in tail lights on, old ca on some cars. It's 12 volt. Um, I got a two pack for $2.20 off of Amazon. It'll be here Friday can't drive into town for two dollars let alone pay for the bulbs I'm sure that you know they'd have it at the auto parts store but for two bucks I'm not gonna bother especially with the uh, lovely virus we have so and it is today it is June 17th so um, anyway I think we're done other than putting a new bulb in there which is just soldering two wires on um, not a big deal popping it back in Put the faceplate on, put the cover on, and I think we're done. Other than if we want to replace the caps, I looked at them, I don't see anything bulging. The, the distortion's really low. Uh, I'm going to call my friend and, and see uh, what she wants to do. But, uh, I mean, you know, the cost of the caps won't be that much. It's just, it's pretty time consuming. And, uh, because of course you can't take the bottom out, you got to pull the board out, and that's. Uh, it's all one big board, it looks like. Let's see. Look again. No, it's two separate boards. There's one board for the amplifier and one board for the tuner and input section. Um, I don't know. You know I mean, it just I don't know if it's justified, but it, otherwise, it seems to be working fine. Now that it's warmed up, the distortion is quite low. Channels are well balanced. The controls are working. Seems quiet, and uh, you know, it's it's pretty hot even at two watts continuous. But you know, playing music, you know, because she doesn't rock the house, so that well, sometimes. But <laughs> uh, so I think we're gonna call it good for tonight. Um, thanks for watching and. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I don't know if I'll do a follow up, but basically, I'm going to get a light bulb. If I recap it all, I'll, I'll uh, follow up. But otherwise, I think it's probably done. There's nothing really wrong other than a little contact cleaner and uh, switch exercise. So I think we're good. Have a good night. Take care. Thanks for watching. Um, and if you like it, great. And if you want to subscribe, awesome. I Until yesterday, I hadn't put a video out. Of course, YouTube said four years. I didn't think it was that long. I thought it was like a couple, but. It said uh, maybe even three, but it said four. So anyway, um, that's all. That's enough of me blabbering, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.